at some of your tools. So we have our magnifying glass and our artboard tool, uh, as well as the type tool. So you can just click in and have point type. And like so. Or you could have area type. Like so. And you can always select and go in and modify the typeface, the size, um, transformations, etc. Uh, with type and with color and with uh, objects, you can uh, save those to your assets. So if I click on my assets panel, then I can click on my heading one under character styles. If I just hit the plus sign, I get my heading one. And I can always change that to H1, give it a name. Same with my heading two. And I can rearrange their order and my paragraph text. And then you can always apply those. To the text that you have. So you just click on it and it applies. Uh, same with color. So if I click on a component with color, I can come into my colors panel and make a swatch. And it has the uh, hexadecimal number, which we haven't really talked about, uh, but is another way in web to designate colors. Uh, the first two letters or numbers indicate R, the next two G, and the last two B, RGB. And I can always change that to, oops, logo red. Great. Uh, we have the pen tool. And to let go, you can just hit escape so it stops drawing. And then you can always double click into one of the points to make it a curve, modify that or you can double click again and make it a point again. Uh, line tool, we have our polygon tool, so it defaults to a triangle, but on the right hand side we can always come in and select the number of sides. Make a hexagon, as well as our fill, our color, uh, border size, all of the various things that we're used to with our uh, Adobe products. And we also have ellipse tool as well as rectangle tool. And with rectangle tool you can always come in and modify the corners as we can with our other Adobe products. Uh, or we can come in and uh, in the on the right hand side we can come in and change those corners and give it some fill. There we go. You can always hit escape to get rid of that. Awesome. One thing to watch out for. is okay so currently if I look at my layers panel uh, this is noted as a rectangle if I click on a corner if I click into it and grab a corner and modify that it becomes a path instead which means you can't modify the roundness of the corners anymore it's uh, quite annoying and something that um, the internet has been complaining to Adobe about as recently as September 4th. So watch out for that issue. Yeah. There's 
zoom out a bit. All right. <laughs> um, as well, uh, with objects, say like the logo, in your assets panel, you can turn it into a component. So components used to be called symbols. So if you're looking up stuff about XD, you may find articles about talking about symbols and not components. They're slightly older articles, but they may have use anyhow. But for now, it's called component, and it means that I can take a whole chunk, like my logo, that I may want to reuse over and over. I can just click the plus sign, and I'll call it logo. And now that it's a component, uh, if I want instances of it, so uh, you have a main component. And we know it's the main component because the top left um, diamond is filled in. Uh, if I want to get an instance of this component, so a particular um, um, copy of it, I can actually just copy and paste and we can see that the little uh, top left is not filled in with green um, or I can just drag from my components and drop that in. So with components uh, you can come into the main component and change it and all of the other instances of that component also change. So if I come in and choose a different color for my fill. It changes all of the others, but with an instance, so the main component affects all of the instances, but the instances don't affect the main component. So I can always come into an instance and change its color and the other ones aren't affected. So you can override the uh, styles on a particular component. Uh, it's good to keep uh, a copy of your component, you know, say off to the side, your main component, and then just have instances working throughout, like so, get rid of these guys. Um, it's nice to keep that main component uh, available to you so you can make another artboard for all of your components, just so that you can always go into the main component and uh, change things can affect all of the other components. Uh, if you happen to delete your main component, it's fine. You can get uh, your main component back. But it's nice to maybe just have it off to the side so you can always have it there so you can manipulate it. Um, yeah, for images, there's a couple ways to deal with images. So uh, one way is I can import, so file, import and it brings in my picture and I can always modify that and I can even round the corners if I want uh, but also XD lets you just drag and drop images in so here's my images folder and I can just drag that in. You'll notice that when you click off of the artboard, it's automatically cropped. Once you click on the image, you can see the full thing. Uh, for masking, it's actually really easy. Uh, you can come in and make a shape. So maybe I want a circle. like so, and then I can select both. And I can come into Object, Mask with Shape. So that's Object, Mask with Shape. And now it's masked. And I can always come in and double click in and change around the sizing and the location of the image within the mask. Uh, another way to do mask is if you have the shape already. So there I have a triangle. You can always 
drag and drop an image into your mask. So hover over and the shape will turn blue and then just drop it in and you have your image in there. And then you just have to double click in to modify it. There we go. Good enough. <laughs> okay. Uh, as well with images. Let's see. Just drop another one in here. So you have lots of options. There we go. So if with the image selected, you have um, various options along the right hand side. Uh, one thing you can do is uh, give it a blur. So. Uh, so you can blur backgrounds, but if you want to blur the object itself, choose the object blur. And you can blur it out if you need, which is a sort of a common thing to do on the web to make images less distracting in the background. All right, great. Thanks for watching and listening. And next up, we'll talk about repeat grid, states and feedback, and a bit about wireframes.